Hey everyone, today I'm going to be covering what you should do if you find yourself in a situation where you can't get down through the runway safely and you need to go around to take another try at it. A lot of the go around videos on YouTube show you how to do it with an airliner that's flying under instrument flight rules. Instead, I'm going to cover how to do it with a smaller general aviation aircraft under visual flight rules or VFR conditions. To do that, I'm going to be using the Diamond DA62, but the procedure would really be the same regardless of the airplane you're using. The procedure to use when you're flying under visual rules is obviously going to be different from the IFR go-arounds, which is why I decided to make this video in the first place. With an IFR flight, there would be a missed approach procedure that you would follow, but with VFR, the game's ATC isn't going to tell you what to do, and you're going to have to fill in the blanks yourself. I'm going to start by looking at the different factors that could potentially cause you to have to go around. The first and probably biggest factor is wind and wind shear as you are turning onto final and descending towards the runway. Wind really makes any landing difficult and the smaller the airplane that you're in, the more it's going to be affected by wind. You might get knocked off your course early on and have enough time to adjust, but if you're low enough to the ground or if the wind is just really too strong and you only notice it near the end, you should still go around to avoid crashing into the ground. The other reason that I often end up having to go around is the terrain. I'm often flying in backcountry or mountainous areas where there's either a mountain near the runway or there's some type of obstruction near the end of the runway that makes it a lot more difficult to have a stable approach all the way down. The stable approach really is the key to a landing no matter where or how you're doing it. So if your approach becomes unstable as you're turning on the final, it can be a reason that you might have to go around and try again. A stable approach means that you have a glide slope that's going to be steady the whole way down. So you're not starting off with 200 feet per minute descent and then quickly accelerating to 1,000 feet per minute and then going back to 200 feet per minute. You're keeping it at a constant number, usually somewhere around 500 or 700 feet per minute. The last reason why you might potentially have to go around, although I don't think this is going to happen in the game, is that if there might be something unexpected as you get very close to the ground, say there was some traffic on the runway, or there was a random truck going by, which does sometimes happen in the game, uh, those types of things can also make you have to decide to go around at the absolute last second. Regardless of the reason of your going around, the earlier you start the procedure, the better and safer it's going to be. Before I go any further, just want to remind you, if you get any value out of this video, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions or you want some clarifications, put them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I've loaded the game and I'm going to put myself into slew mode so that I can give you a better idea of what you need to do when you're going to go around. Afterwards, I'll fly this landing myself and I'll show you the procedure in action. I'm going to give myself a little bit of altitude just so that we have a better picture of what's going on. There are three things you need to remember if you're going to be going around to have another attempt at landing, and that's power, attitude, and configuration. As I'm coming in for the landing, let's say I get to a point where I realize that I'm not going to make the runway. Either it's because I'm not lined up with the runway like this, or I'm too low, or I'm way too high. In this situation, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply full power. You never want to just apply partial power. You always want to make sure you're using the maximum amount of thrust possible, especially in situations like this one where there's a mountain off the end of the runway. You don't want to be slamming into it as you're preparing to go around. I'll put myself back a little lower again, just to give you a better idea. Now, it can take a little bit of time for the airplane to build up enough airspeed, even at full power. You don't want to start to climb right away. What you really want to do is you want to let the airspeed build up to a point where you know you're going to have enough airspeed to do somewhat of a normal takeoff. In the Diamond DA40, like I'm flying today, I would normally fly this takeoff at around 83 knots, which is the VX airspeed, which is going to give me the best angle of climb for the airplane. That means I need to make sure that I've gotten to at least 83 knots before I start my climb. Otherwise, I may end up in a situation where I just don't have enough power to get over the obstacle. Now, when you do apply full power, the plane's going to want to start climbing right away. That's because the engine's developing more power, which is generating more air hitting the wings, which is generating more lift. To fight that, you're going to have to use forward pressure on the stick to make sure the plane doesn't pitch up too soon. 
You really need to deliberately hold the nose down as long as possible until you've reached your VX or VY climb speed that you're going to use to go around. The last thing you want at this point is to start climbing too soon, end up in a stall and not be able to get out of the way of any obstacles and having your flight come to an abrupt end. For example, if I've started applying power here, let's say I were to fly straight and level until I get to VY, let's say around here. Now this is where I would set my climb attitude and let the airplane start lifting into the air. At that point, I would also do a rough trim because I don't want to have to hold too much pressure on the stick. If you're in a situation where you're really close to the ground and you decide to go around, like if I were like this for example, try and avoid pulling up on the stick to avoid impacting the ground. If you've got the wheels down, you really don't have to worry about it too much. Even if the wheels touch a little bit, it's going to be fine. Lastly, let's talk about airplane configuration. In the diamond, I have flaps and I have retractable landing gear. In a situation where I am going to be going around, what I'm going to do is set the flaps to the takeoff position once my descent has stopped. So if I'm descending towards the runway and I decide to go around, what I'm going to do is leave the flaps as is until I've built up enough airspeed and I'm no longer descending, that's when I'm going to bring the flaps back to the takeoff position. You don't want to retract your landing flaps too early though because you might lose a lot of lift and end up impacting the ground. Always set the flaps to the takeoff position first and then retract the landing gear. You want to keep the landing gear down just a little bit longer in case you were to screw something up and you do end up impacting the ground. It's a lot better to have the landing gear down than not. And like I said before, if you have the landing gear down and you do accidentally touch the ground a little bit, so long as you've got the right pitch attitude, it's not going to be a problem. Once you've successfully set the power, attitude, and configuration, it's time to implement the next step, which is to prepare to come around for landing again. At an airport that isn't busy, that's probably just going to be re-entering the traffic pattern and trying to land one more time. So in this situation, I would just come out to sea and I would come all the way back around and attempt my landing one more time. It's important to plan what you're going to do when you go around before you actually have to do it. In some situations, it just makes more sense to fly over the airport one or two times just to get a better sense of the area and what you'll do if you do end up having to go around. In this case, obviously, I don't have much of a choice. When I miss my landing here, I really need to make sure that I've got enough power by the time I'm around here so that I have enough time to climb and avoid impacting the mountains over right off to the left here. All right, let's do a quick demo of the go around. All right, I am configured for my approach towards the runway that we were just looking at. I'm just aligning myself a little bit better right now. And I am in the approach configuration. I've got my flaps in the first position. I'm at my approach altitude. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute the landing as if I were coming to a complete stop and didn't know that I was going to be going around just to give you a better idea of what it looks like. What I will try and simulate is what I would do is if I was already low to the ground when I realized that I have to go around. So in this situation, I really need to start descending a little bit more. I'm gonna add my second level of flaps and because the runway is already coming up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the landing gear as well and you can see there's a building off right in front of me there. We have to avoid that building as we're coming in to land. So I need to keep a little bit of altitude and I need to go around it just the slightest little bit. So to do that, I'll just get my airspeed down where I run it to around 75 or so knots, just like that. And I'm going to trim to hold this uh, descent rate, which is at around 500 or so feet. I'm going to try and stay above the building as much as possible. And I'm going to line myself with the runway again as if I was just coming in for a landing. And I'm going to line myself up with those white spots, which is my landing point. 
and I'm going to continue my descent down as much as possible. At this point, I think landing would be fairly realistic, but let's say there was a wind that blew or something, and I didn't think I could make the runway. At this point, I'd apply full power. I would hold the nose down to build up a little bit of airspeed, and there we go. I've reached enough airspeed so I can let the attitude of the airplane change and get a little bit of altitude. I can raise my, my flaps to the first position, and because I am well away from the ground, I'll also raise my landing gear. And at this point, all I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare for my next attempt at landing, which is really just going to be going around and trying it again. That's really all I do when I have to go around. I do three things. I make sure my power is set properly. I make sure my attitude is set properly as soon as possible. And finally, I worry about my configuration. So I look at things like flaps and landing gear to make sure I'm configured properly for my climb back to cruise altitude. At this point, all I'm going to do is head out to sea a little bit so that I can try the landing one more time. And I might end the video here since there's not much else to see with regards to the go around. I hope you found some value out of this video and how to go around in general aviation aircraft. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please make sure to put them in the comments below. And I'll see you next time.